So thank you all for joining us today for SOLIDWORKS 2017, What's New? This is actually part three of the series. Specifically, we want to look at um, SOLIDWORKS simulation, flow simulation, and plastics, injection molding simulation, um, and the new features that are in SOLIDWORKS 2017 for those. Uh, my name is Martin Hayes. I'm one of the application engineers here at Concepts in Production. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll want to look at uh, the the main simulation aspect first. So we'll actually look at this control unit and do a little FEA analysis on that housing. Look at some of the features they've added for us, some of the improvements there. And then with flow simulation, really I just want to highlight a couple of the big improvements that, uh, that they made this year, uh, big enhancements they made this year with SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. And then we'll do uh, a good deep look into plastics. And if plastics isn't a product that you're familiar with for injection molding simulation, uh, we will spend a little bit of time in that software to kind of walk you through what that product looks like and how it works, as well as um, what they kind of did a, a full uh, user interface overhaul in plastics this year. So what that uh, kind of brings to the table with SOLIDWORKS 2017. So starting out in, this is your typical FEA simulation, so the SOLIDWORKS simulation packages. We will walk through uh, those improvements in SOLIDWORKS 2017. So um, one of them, automatic decision making, being able to dismiss messages uh, automatically. If you've run a simulation before, or if you run simulation on a regular basis, you, you might have noticed that sometimes you'll get a pop-up um, 30, 30 seconds or two minutes into the simulation that says, you know, you need to make a decision. Are we going to go large displacement or small displacement is the error message example here. Uh, they've, you know, little improvements like this, being able to add, uh, 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 automatically being able to dismiss that message for you so that as you as you leave your desk, the scene, you won't come back two hours later and the simulation is still sitting there waiting on your response. Um, so, uh, some little improvements like that, but also some some very uh, large, uh, uh, great improvements that we have with uh, being able to work with nonlinear studies as a copy of a static study uh, in, in SOLIDWORKS 2017. Um, so, several things we want to look at, and we'll go ahead and get into uh, the SOLIDWORKS software here. So, we've got the control unit, and we want to... Uh, simulate if a extra force is pulled as we open um, this battery unit. So specifically we're looking at these tabs on the side here and the forces and, and uh, the stresses as they uh, propagate through those tabs. So we'll go ahead and open the part. We've actually got a simulation set up. And we'll go ahead and go into the simulation and activate that configuration. So uh, this configuration is a simplified configuration for the simulation. And uh, most importantly, you'll notice it's set up for a symmetric simulation. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the simulation product, you can work with half of the model and use those to produce uh, symmetric results. So kind of walking through what we've got set up, we have the uh, battery door part assigned the ABS material. And with just the single part, we won't need any connections. And for the fixtures, we do have um, this outer faced fixed. Uh, these outer sides are fixed, so they won't shift. We have the symmetry constraint applied in the middle. So it will uh, account for that symmetry in the part. And then we are actually using a reference geometry fixture to uh, apply a displacement. So just under two and a half millimeters of displacement inwards on uh, these tabs here on the side. And so we want to see, you know, as we as we deform these tabs, where are the stresses as they propagate through the part. So we'll go ahead and uh, run the study. And the first thing I want to highlight is that um, being able to automatically dismiss those messages. So you can control whether this is turned on or off in your options, but I've got mine turned on here for 60 seconds. So uh, it, it tells me, you know, I've got a minute to respond to this and it's just uh, giving me a warning that I might want to consider using a large displacement. Typically, I'd probably go ahead and use large displacement or shift into a nonlinear, uh, but we want to go ahead and just run a quick small displacement study. And then we're going to look at copying that study into nonlinear. Um, but if I was away from my desk, this, uh, in the past, uh, we've actually had it requested um, from, from our customers that, um, you know, why do I have to push the button, just let it go ahead and run because I'm not at my desk anymore. 
Um, so they've added that in. That's a, a great feature uh, in 2017. So uh, we went ahead and ran it with that small displacement study. And next we want to take a look at uh, some of the improvements with analyzing results in simulation studies. So uh, with a part like this, and, and I know a lot of my stresses are going to be down uh, toward the bottom where the, where the part bottlenecks here, uh, but we can actually get um, some unrealistic stresses at sharp corners like those. So they've added a tool in to help isolate those uh, unrealistic stresses called stress hotspot diagnostics. And what this will do is will allow us to see areas that um, might be uh, unrealistic stresses due to um, you know those sharp corners in there. Typically uh, we're going to see in this model it's actually going to show us the areas of induced stresses that uh, would probably be solved by, you know, a fillet would probably be on that edge in the, uh, you know, in the actual injection molded part. And so that's a, a good little uh, tool that we have to warn us about those uh, stress hotspot areas. Uh, it can also help to isolate, you know, the areas of, um, you know, the, the main high stress areas as well. So as we go uh, back over into that stress plot, we also have some improvements working with um, your legend here. So now instead of having to go in and actually um, modify the result plot, we can do a lot of uh, modifications here built into the chart. If we wanted to uh, adjust the maximums or reset the colors uh, of the maximums in this plot. So if I go ahead and click on this color here, I can actually uh, change that to see you know any areas above a certain value that I'm interested in. And we'll just go ahead and uh, reset those. Um, as well as uh, knowing that we have those those sharp areas there at the bottom that might be causing some some inaccurate stresses. We might want to go in and do a uh, nonlinear study. We do have uh, a good amount of uh, displacement here in the model, so we might want to take into account the plasticity of the model itself. Previously, uh, you could duplicate a study, copy a study, but um, you couldn't transition a copy from static to nonlinear. So now they've given us that option as we copy the study instead of having to create a nonlinear study from scratch and copy individually each thing from one tree to the other now we can simply select nonlinear and generate a copy of that study uh, to be run in nonlinear uh, from there of course we'll, we'll want to go in and make sure uh, we get a, a nonlinear material applied and in case you don't know with uh, SOLIDWORKS active subscription of SOLIDWORKS simulation you do have access to uh, materiality um, materials online where you can actually download uh, different specifications and I've got a ABS plastic download here with a uh, plasticity applied in it so just switch into a, a nonlinear material model but a great great tool online to be able to use that materiality.com uh, to integrate directly into SOLIDWORKS and save those in Another thing they've improved with nonlinear studies, not just being able to copy them over from a static study, but uh, in the study properties for a nonlinear study, now you have the option, uh, just like we used to in all the other studies, uh, to be able to do an automatic solver selection. So instead of having to, you know, instead of taking an expert in nonlinear analysis, uh, we can allow people to, you know, the, the average uh, engineer uh, user in SOLIDWORKS simulation to be able to run, you know, the, the most accurate study quickly without having to, to spend as much time um, in, the, in, in the FAA analysis itself. Um, so getting to good accurate results quickly and, uh, you know, user friendly. So um, they've added that automatic study solver uh, so I've got this uh, nonlinear study. It takes a little while to run. So I've instead of watching a progress bar together, um, I do have a copy of it that I've already pre-ran ahead of time. So we can see from the results here that uh, we did get realistic results in our um, in our small displacement study. 
but uh, of course these results are going to be a little more accurate for us and we wanted to compare those they've actually improved the compare results tool in uh, SOLIDWORKS 2017 so I can just simply choose the two studies that I want to compare and which plots to compare from them and we'll use the legend from the nonlinear plot and uh, you know with the, the new improvements with the compare tools it's uh, really easy to be able to see you know what type of differences it makes using a nonlinear study versus that that, uh, that static study with small displacements now back in the assembly uh, we will take a look at um, one of the other options we have in SOLIDWORKS 2017 for displaying those simulation results so I've got uh, an assembly uh, simulation here of that main part and I'll go ahead and get it loaded and we'll take a look at the results there and what they've added for us uh, as far as on the assembly level is we can actually use uh, these simulation results and while we were always able to to view these results in the context of the assembly um, now they've actually made it where we can um, view the results alongside real view or photo view 360 graphics um, so we can come out with some some nice high quality results either with real view or uh, if you import that into photo view 360 for nice professional renderings and this is you know going to give us a, a lot better ways to not only analyze the results but communicate those results to whether it's uh, working with a customer or to another department um, being able to see the results uh, not only in the context of the assembly but with um, that that high quality view is a, is a great option we have in 2017 all right so next we want to take a look at SOLIDWORKS flow simulation with 2017 and like I said really just want to highlight two of the main um, big improvements that they've made with flow simulation the first one being uh, that we now have the ability to copy the conditions of a flow simulation from a smaller component a lower level component up to uh, the higher level assembly for instance uh, this this PCB board has been analyzed and we've set up uh, the, the flow simulation for that we can actually take those flow conditions and uh, pull them into the larger level study as we want to take more into account with uh, with that control unit um, so these studies are linked if we were to, to change any of the conditions in the component those could be updated into your larger assembly uh, into the flow simulation for the larger assembly uh, as well as uh, you're able to uh, maybe set up a design library of common components that you that you use in your flow simulations with their um, with their flow simulation conditions built in so uh, this is going to allow us to be able to save a lot of time setting up those studies and just you know the convenience of being able to reuse that data um, over and over again especially for the components that we use in a lot of studies the second improvement we want to highlight in flow simulation is multi-parameter optimization so previously you were only able to work with a single parameter at a time uh, attempting to working toward optimizing your design but now you can uh, actually use um, several parameters as you look for that optimal value uh, if you've worked with design studies in SOLIDWORKS FEA simulation um, this is similar to that in flow simulation but now you're not limited to just a single value at a time it really uh, is going to allow us to be able to, to, to quickly set up the most challenging validation problems and uh, with this another improvement they've made with the optimization tool in flow simulation is you can actually use uh, geometry variables like dimensions uh, or you can use simulation parameters so um, with both of those available and uh, being able to take into account multiple things at one time flow simulation certainly has got uh, really great for us with uh, SOLIDWORKS 2017 where it's doing you know it, it's able to do uh, some of that validation and design work for us to give us optimal values for dimensions or simulation parameters with uh, SOLIDWORKS Plastics, they really did a good job updating the UI style, the user interface to match and integrate better into SOLIDWORKS and not just SOLIDWORKS but with the new icons that they've introduced in 2016 and, and refined in 2017. I think SOLIDWORKS has done a really good job you know, responding to customers and bringing a, a user interface that um, is customizable and modern and that everyone is able to, to get it set up a way that, that works for them. 
Um, they did add support in Plasma Simulation for uh, derived configurations for doing a combination of uh, automatic mesh sizing and assigning the size in the mesh. And uh, we'll took, take a look at some of the other improvements like uh, working with um, draft in uh, runner setup or um, some of the different uh, new features they've given us for analyzing those results. So we have the, the control module cover here. That's what we want to run a plastic simulation on. And here in the configuration manager, uh, we just want to point out as we as we switch into that model, it, uh, flow simulation, or excuse me, plastic simulation does support now the uh, derived configurations. And looking at our uh, settings for plastic simulation, they've added in a new setting that's, that's really going to uh, help in opening times for part models. Uh, so uh, when you're running a part that has, uh, when you're opening a part that has flow sim uh, plastic simulation information attached to it, sometimes that plastic information as it's loaded can take longer to open the part. So they've actually added an option in down here to allow you to disable loading that plastics data. So with that turned off, the parts open really quickly and I can do any modeling changes I need to make um, or any references I need to make with it. But uh, the plastics information isn't loaded until I click on that plastics tab where it will come in and load that information for me. Uh, so we will, we'll go ahead and switch over to the derived configuration that we want to uh, set up a little study on, show you some of the improvements with that. So as we go ahead and uh, reload that project, the first thing we want to look at is um, as we set up the mesh for this simulation, we'll have an option here to use the previous design. And so this is something that uh, we didn't have in the past where you'd, you'd have to, to start over if you will want to change uh, the, the simulation or uh, you know recreate that. Um, now we have the option to use the information from the previous design so that we're not having to redo all that work that we put into it setting it up. Now I do want to leave it on solid mesh procedure uh, but that, that previous design option is a, a great one that we have now um, to be able to work with. But I want to go in actually to the, the running and cooling system design so I can show you some of the improvements we've made with um, using draft specifically on runners. All right, so as it loads that out, um, previously working with runners, you would have to, um, for where the, they draft in at the gates like this, you would have to put in a, an in value and an out value. But uh, clearing these out, I'll show you how we can set these up a, a lot more easily now, working with uh, a draft angle. And so it's kind of one of those options that you know you would just uh, typically expect to be there, and, and they've added it in uh, to be able that we can add a draft angle. Uh, so rather than having to do hand calculations, um, we can just put in that uh, we want that uh, 1.5 millimeters here, and with a draft angle of 10 degrees. And that's going to be at each of these uh, valves here. And so working with uh, the draft angles like that, you can uh, directly interface and use a mix of the, the two different approaches. And so, um, you know, setting up a typical line attached to those. And then from there, we uh, just need to get in those horizontal segments and that, uh, that top injection location. So for the injection location, again, I'm going to turn on that draft uh, so I don't have to do any of those calculations to figure out what that, uh, what that outlet's going to be there. So being able to work with draft on that runner design just gives us some, some great uh, options you know, to allow the software to do a little bit more of that work for us. So in creating the mesh for plastic simulation, uh, we now have some extra options for uh, controlling local refinement. The automatic local refinement, of course, is going to kind of give us a blended mesh um, that's going to go from our, our typical, I've got uh, the, the generic size set to three millimeters here, and uh, the automatic local refinement will uh, go into, the, in, the software will automatically um, tighten that mesh up in sharp corners or areas of interest for us. And then the assign size would be if I wanted to override that, uh, 
if I wanted to override the mesh in certain areas that I picked. Uh, but what I want to use actually is the automatic and assign. So it will do the automatic selections for us. And I'll go ahead and just clear out that previous information there, show you how that's set up. Um, so with the uh, assigning this mesh, simply just select the faces where we want to have some higher resolution on, like this little, uh, this little tab here, this little connector here, uh, where we want to know a little bit more about the plastic study in that area. It's an area of interest for us. And we'll go ahead and create the mesh. And so after the mesh is created, you'll see both uh, a very fine mesh in that area that I've selected here using that assign size option. And uh, if you look at some of these areas of high curvature, the mesh did automatically uh, refine in those areas for us. So some good options with uh, working with local refinement and setting up those meshes. And the next thing we want to do is set up um, this, the, uh, not only the injection location, but I want to show you uh, some of the improvements they've made with the control valves. So we'll go ahead and allow the, the software to create the solid mesh for that. And so adding control valves in, uh, that'll be at each of these uh, intersections um, where, where uh, the fluid is going to enter the cavity. And SOLIDWORKS can actually um, automatically find those for us. And now we've got some good controls uh, to handle how those control valves are going to operate. So we'll go to uh, injection locations like normal, and we'll start out with uh, just a good 10 millimeter injection location at the top. And then here in control valves is what I wanted to show you, uh, some of that new stuff. Um, now I can go through and individually select each, each of these control valves, but um, I'm a fan of any options that, that use the word automatic, so I uh, certainly appreciate when SOLIDWORKS incorporates those into the design of the software. And so uh, using that automatically add valves, it did uh, detect all three of these valves for me. And not only that, but I can step through the valves and customize them as I need to. So uh, this middle valve here, the third one in the list, um, we can actually control when that valve opens and closes using either uh, volume ratio once a certain amount has entered the cavity, using a timing, or uh, just allow the software to automatically uh, optimize uh, that control valve. So, for example, I'll set this valve up to open at 30% until uh, the, the end of the study. All right, so with, uh, with that study set up, you would go through and, and run the study. Um, just like we did with uh, simulation, I do have another study on the main assembly that uh, has already been run. So we'll take a look at the results and some of the improvements that they've made with plastics in 2017 uh, for analyzing those results. Starting out with uh, you know the, your main flow results here, we can take a look at um, some of the options they've given us. So uh, along with the legend scale, on the, the side of the viewport here. They've also, they've added in a listing of the minimum and maximum values. And so as you adjust the scale, you know, if I wanted the scale to go only up to one second, I still have a note on, you know, what the maximum time is on the model. Uh, so that's, that's uh, one of the improvements they made, just kind of including a little bit information here. As you adjust your plot, you still got that reference information for the max scale there and we can reset that. Uh, another thing they've improved is uh, being able to control the speed of these animations uh, for the plastic simulation. So I can you know, speed up or slow down that plastic simulation. And uh, as we see it here in a good slow, slow view, the side valves are open and that control valve after about 30% when that one's triggered, uh, we can see actually as it kicks in on the model there. Now, a couple other improvements they've made with viewing the results, um, working with weld lines, as well as uh, we'll take a look at working with XY plots and uh, some of the improvements they've made there. So turning on the view for the weld lines, uh, we had some previous capabilities to view weld lines with uh, plastics injection molding simulation, but now they've color coded the weld lines by angle. So we can see uh, the, the blue angles are those obtuse angles where the plastics come in together. And then uh, as we approach the warmer colors, the red angles are gonna be the sharpest angles as the plastics come together. And uh, so this will not only show you where the weld lines are occurring, 
but also um, what what type of weld lines you're getting and um, how, how abrupt the plastics coming together at those locations. And the last thing we want to highlight here in plastic simulation is um, with the XY plots, we actually now have the option to show the part mass um, on the XY plots here and it does separate it out into the uh, flow and pack cycles so we can see uh, the part mass over um, over the course of the study as and how quickly uh, that, that's flowing as it starts out low and then um, kind of approaches the linear section and it begins to pack in at the end of that cycle. Uh, so some great improvements with plastics. I really again like the, uh, the user interface. You might have noticed as we were in there it really flows a lot better now with uh, the, the SOLIDWORKS environment there and uh, of course all of it's been updated with the new icons and those kind of things. Um, some great ways to not only uh, reuse some of our information as we set up studies whether it's derived configurations or uh, reusing uh, previous study data or um, uh, we looked at in those flow and uh, those uh, the, the flow results and the XY plot results uh, just some some great enhancements made that allow us to analyze that data uh, quicker and easier and you know use those uh, whether it's using screenshots or publishing reports um, all, all those result options give us better ways to communicate our results um, to, to whether it's with a customer or another department so SOLIDWORKS 2017 the theme with 2017 is the power you need to drive innovation now we've uh, looked at you know the new improvements with SOLIDWORKS 2017 in uh, the simulation products. So when it comes to innovation, um, SOLIDWORKS allows us to be able to to drive innovation. Um, but also um, SOLIDWORKS itself, uh, every year we see new innovations, ways that are going to make our jobs easier and faster. Thank you all for joining us today.